Welcome back to the official Offshore Europe podcast. My name is Steph and I'm joined by my colleague Dan Rigby, VP for Growth and Development for Consulting at Wood to round off the first day and it has been a super busy day. Um, It's the first time since COVID um, that the industry has come together, I guess, on this scale. So since 2019 and there's been a real buzz, I guess, around the stand uh, today. Numerous plenary sessions, panels, presentations, as well as podcasts. And the show was open today with a packed plenary session, um, which provided a great overview of where the industry is today. So I don't know if you want to share some of your key insights from this morning. Yeah, no, I think it's been uh, a great start to Offshore Europe. Um, Our stand is absolutely brilliant. And I think I've even started to lose my voice with the amount of speaking I've, I've been doing. But yeah, I think this morning it kicked off with some real key messages. I think we need to think about everything as a, a wider energy system. You know, that is an energy mix of, you know, oil and gas, renewables, but including things like the hydrogen and carbon capture. I think that's really going to be where the operators and service companies come together for this energy system. I think one of the key points that was made by by Graham Stewart um, earlier today as well in the opening uh, remarks was, it's really about, you know, looking at the opportunities, you know, to power Britain, um, you know, from British companies as well, which I thought was really good for Aberdeen and the wider, you know, UK energy market as well. Yeah, and that, so that's Graeme Stewart, Minister of uh, State for Climate, um, a part of the UK government. He was very clear it's kind of a one industry approach, approach, working together to drive that sustainable energy. And I guess some of the other key messages were positioning the industry, where are we now? So the industry supports 200,000 jobs. We know there are more coming. We're ensuring our own energy security, like you say, while whilst delivering the energy transition and oil and gas is very much part of that journey. So like you say, it's part of that that mix. Did you have any other takeaways from this morning? Or? No, I, th- I think, you know, some of the other kind of key points that we've been hearing as well, Steph, is, you know, the, the supply chain. You know, there's a lot of different companies in here. Um, I think investments are really going to drive a lot, a lot of decisions here. Um, as well as policy um, as well. You know, Dan Carter, our president for decarbonisation, you know, he mentioned in one of the sessions I was just in earlier today, you know, it's about really being proactive and not waiting for some of these things. You know, we all need to come together as that overall uh, energy system mix to drive this forward. We can't sit back and wait for uh, some of these um, external factors either. Absolutely. And on the stand today, so as part of the official podcast, we've been joined by experts in artificial intelligence and decarbonizing oil and gas assets. Did you have any key takeaways from, from our sessions today? Yeah, it was really insightful. You know, I, I sat back and listened with, with some of our colleagues and there were some of our people on the stand there as, as well. And I think, you know, some of the insights that were shared by using data to make engineering decisions through artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning, you know, these are really good insights, both on the CapEx side and the OPEX side of a, the asset life cycle. But I think some of these are really going to help some of the asset operators with late life assets to help, you know, reduce maintenance backlogs, you know, look into things like the decarbonization of assets, you know, through our Iris Edge technology, mm-hmm. you know, methane detection. I think that's really going to help people, you know, on the sustainability um, roadmap as, as well. So for me, it was really insightful and I'm really looking forward to, to you know, sharing it back on social media um, when we get that up in live today Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And I think digitalization is very much on the agenda at, at the show as a whole, but very much on Wood's agenda too. And it's a busy week ahead, lots going on, a whole host of panel sessions, plenaries, podcasts. What's on the agenda for tomorrow and the rest of the week? Well, tomorrow morning we've got the um, um, uh, the business breakfast session. Steve Nichols is going to be on the panel for that, so I'm really looking forward to that session tomorrow morning. Um, you know, we have a number of of our podcasts. It's going to be on the um, the wood stand tomorrow, but we've also got our um, uh, digital twin paper being presented um, to tomorrow. So you know, there's a couple of key key points I think um, tomorrow, but. I think also, you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, during the week is on Friday, we've got a recruitment, um, we've got our overall recruitment day um, on Friday. So there's been a lot of people coming to the stand, asking about recruitment opportunities. And I think Friday is going to be a really exciting day for, you know, a number of people within Wood and a number of, um, you know, people looking for that next opportunity with Wood as well. Excellent. Yeah, lots going on, busy week ahead. But thanks very much for joining me, Dad. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dad. Cheers. Thank you.